Good morning, everybody. It is about quarter to eight. Just finished milking the cows. Now I'm gonna go feed them all. We got a total of five batches to mix up this morning. Two for the milk cows and three for the corrals. So we gotta throw some tires too. Gonna start out by doing that because it's not that hot yet. If I waited to the end of feeding, uh, I'd be sweating really bad if I did it then. So probably gonna start out with that and um, get at it. It has been getting extremely hot out here lately. Like we've been getting 34, 35 degrees Celsius during the day uh, in the afternoon, which is incredibly hot. And to be honest with you guys, I would much prefer it to be minus 35 than plus 35. I don't know, it's just me. Let me know what you guys prefer in the comments down below. I just cut the plastic off right after I threw the tires and then I just grapple it off the pit. Don't have to pull it by hand or anything. Just scoop it with the bucket. I'm gonna go bring this to the dump and then we will start feeding the cows. So we first check the corrals, see how much everybody ate. Want to make sure that everyone's finishing their food. If they didn't from the day before, we'll just dump a little bit less there today. We want to make sure that feed doesn't stay in there for too long because otherwise it's going to start heating up and then it doesn't taste so good. Flies are going to get in there and it's not good. So we got to really be on top of it. When it's this hot, the feed turns bad real quick. So we can't feed them too much and have too much left over. So we've got the record sheet here for the corrals. Uh, it's just got the number corral on top. And then every day we write down exactly how many kilograms of feed we feed to them. That way the next day when you're feeding, if they didn't eat everything, you can look on here and feed them 100 less. And you can really stay on top of how much you feed the cows like this. The first batch I'm gonna be mixing feed for is the young heifers and the breeding heifers. So, so corrals two and three. And I'm just looking at the ingredient list right now so I know exactly how much to feed them, how much grain to put in. So I need 40 kilograms of barley grain. And 20 kilograms of dried distiller's grain. A half bucket of minerals. So now that all the grains are in the feed wagon, we're gonna dump the forages in it. And we're also gonna put straw in there. Um, the reason why we feed straw, it's tough grinded straw, super fine stuff, is because the silage and the grains are pretty rich in energy, and if that's all we fed to the cows, it gets super fat, and we need the cows to be healthy. Fat cow isn't healthy. They're gonna have health problems, especially when they come into calving. Um, it just isn't as good for the cow. So we have a nutritionist balance the diet. So they go through, they test all the silages, they figure out exactly what the feed value is, how much energy, how much protein, and all that kind of stuff is in the silage. And then they balance it with the right amount of grain, dry distillers grain, and straw to make the perfect ration for the certain age of cow. So I have a sheet in there, the ingredient list, that's what I was looking at earlier. It tells me exactly how many kilograms of each ingredient to dump in the feed wagon. So we're just gonna dump the forages in there and then we're gonna go and dump it in front of those heifers. All the ingredients are in this load. We're gonna mix it for about five minutes. We wanna make sure all the grain is thoroughly mixed up with all the silage and the straw. I need a lock corral too. There's some heifers in there that are in heat. I'm not gonna be AIing them this morning, but since I'm feeding, I'm the one that needs to lock them up. barley in their ration literally over one ton uh, because we're trying to fatten them up 
make some nice steaks out of them. This ration has the highest density of barley grain in it compared to any ration, even the milk cows. Per head, the steers are getting 9.5 kilograms of barley per day. The steers also require a mineral in their TMR. Uh, we just store it in the shop here. We always try to feed the milk cows around 10 o'clock in the morning now. So that's what I'm doing, mixing up right now. It contains a little bit of everything. Barley grain, dried distiller's grain, bunch of minerals and supplements for the milk cows and then there's also some beet pulp in the last bin there and then we got to put barley silage in there and also pea silage and then we can dump water in there mix it up and dump it in front of them but uh, this is the most energy dense diet on the farm cows don't get fat still because they're turning all of the energy and the nutrients the protein everything in the feed they turn it into milk so it's hard to get a milk cow fat unless she's really late in her lactation. She's not producing so much milk anymore. Then she'll start to pack it on. But um, cows turn most of the feed into milk. So you want to push as much energy to them as possible. So you can see here there's a bit of feed loose still. We can't have any of that feed loose by the time I'm done feeding today. As soon as oxygen mixes up with the feed, the silage, it's going to start heating up and after this afternoon when it's baking in the plus 30 weather in the sun, it's going to be really poor, really bad feed. Cows aren't going to want to eat it when it's that hot. It's going to start to smell. So we got to make sure that we clean right up to the pit face the silage that's packed really hard that hasn't been agitated yet we got to make sure we feed right up to that and leave no excess at all it's just going to be bad feed tomorrow morning So I just loaded the last B train. Um, my dad did the first two, I did the second two. They can load themselves, but we like to be there. Uh, we like to make sure that no grain gets spilt over the hopper. Most truckers are good, but one time we had it, it was brutal, so I had to do quite a bit of shoveling. So we just like to be there. Um, those are the peas that you guys saw being combined in the last video. They're already up and out of here is good. I guess those trucks will carry 1,500 bushels. Uh, they are weight restricted. I'm not totally sure how many tons they can carry. Around 40, 42 maybe uh, for a heavy one. There's one pulling up onto the road right here. So cows are fed. We shipped those four loads of peas out. Now this afternoon I'm going to hop in the case loader and we're going to haul some dirt. Been doing this over the course of summer, just hauling dirt, leveling some stuff out. If you guys remember, like probably one or two months ago, uh, I hooked up a sand buggy for behind the tractor, moved a bit of dirt. We did that a bit, um, but that thing is left to guard. It wasn't ours, we were borrowing it, so it's gone now. So we're just hauling it everything with the loader now. Uh, it goes pretty quick, it's got a pretty big bucket on there. So that's what I'm gonna be doing this afternoon. So we've gotten quite a bit of dirt behind the curls here over the course of summer. Could have been more, but we just didn't get around to it. 
there's just a little bit more to do around back here and then we're gonna go beside the barn and that's what I'm really excited to get cleaned up. I really want on that side of the barn, our main cow barn, uh, we have a big pile there. I've been talking about it more and more. Uh, we wanna get that leveled there. We're gonna get it done before winter time. It's just a matter of do we have enough time but we're just gonna have to make it happen because it's gonna look awesome. Once the entire yard is flat, we'll get someone out to level it all so it's perfect and um, I'm just excited for that to see what it looks like. It should look pretty good. But we've got to finish this first. Can't get ahead of ourselves, so we're gonna to get to work on this and then hopefully today I can start moving dirt beside the barn there. So this is why farmers hate diesel exhaust fluid. You're just working away putting hours in and then your piece of equipment says poor def add blue quality detected torque limited so I have no idea why it would say that uh, we always buy like good quality def and we put it in there and then this crap happens and for literally no reason it starts to limit your torque of the machine it's 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 such crap it's unbelievable it costs so much money so what I try and do when this shows up is just turn the piece of equipment off, wait a couple seconds so the screen dies. You can really tell that whole stuff is just crap when you turn your piece of equipment off and then turn it back on and it fixes the problem. If you have a breakdown and turning it off and then on again doesn't fix it, that's a real problem. But if it's fixed like this, that's just BS. Look what I just dug up. I think that's a mole. Buddy, you're lucky to be alive. <laughs> yeah, buddy, I don't think that's a good spot to start digging a new hole. I'm just trying to get underneath the ground. <laughs> Pocket gopher, that's what I think that thing, I, that's what we call him up here, I think, not a mole. It's a type of mole, he digs under the ground, Sometimes you'll see like lumps of ground in your lawn. It's one of those suckers. We have a bunch of traps for them. They're pretty annoying in the wrong spot, so we try to keep rid of them, but I'm sure he'll uh, find a new home on the other side of the corrals there when I bring him there. <laughs> I'm at the other yard now. We have a bunch of flat bottom bins here. And last summer, me and Dima cleaned out two of them. They were right full. We shoveled them all out. And there's still a little bit of grain left in them so we're just here to broom it up we brought the loader along we'll just chuck it in the bucket and we got to do these two bigger flat bottom bins How was that? <coughs> <laughs> Only was in there for like five minutes, but definitely would have been worth bringing like face mask or something so we didn't have to breathe in all that moldy dust. Whew. So this is just at our other yard. There's 10 flat bottom bins here in total and we're gonna be buying barley off a guy. He wanted to put it on the ground, put plastic over it. But we figured we got all these bins here, they usually sit empty so I figured tell him to put him in here. That'd be better for both of us, so. We had to make sure everything was clean. We checked all the rest of the bins. They're all empty, so 10 of them good to go here. But uh, that's gonna be it for today's video, guys. If you enjoyed, be sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons down below. Check out the Instagram, at SaskDutchKid, and I hope to see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.